We got a mystery brew in here in Chicago. A missing persons case. Someone we've all grown fond of these past two seasons, a valued friend, trusted teammate, seems to have vanished without a trace. And no one's quite sure where he's gone, or who's to blame for his absence. Sure, there's been plenty of finger pointing, it wouldn't be Chicago if there wasn't, but no real answers have been found. So the question remains, where is Jordan Howard? And who or what can we blame for his disappearance? A lot of fuss has been made over the usage of Jordan Howard this year, or rather the lack of usage. There was a lot of excitement heading into the season, with Matt Nagy taking over as head coach of the Bears and bringing his Andy Reid-inspired offensive system with him. Weird time management decisions and all. I mean, he did play a big role in giving Kareem Hunt 325 touches last year in Kansas City, so a lot of people thought this could be a career year for Howard. He'd worked on his pass-catching ability and now finds himself in a more creative offensive system that, at least in theory, featured a downfield passing game that was all but non-existent under John Fox and company. Six games into the season, there's certainly been more creativity in the offense, more misdirects and tap passes, more motion built in to confuse the defense, but there's also been less Jordan Howard. Uh, I should correct myself there, there's been less production from Jordan Howard. He actually has 90 carries and 101 total touches through six games, which, sure, it's a bit lower than the past two seasons, but I mean, not dramatically. He averaged around 20 total touches per start his rookie year, uh, about 18.6 total touches per start last year, and he's hovering around 16.8 this year. So Nagy is using him a fair amount, it's just not quite as heavily as he's been used in the past. The big difference, overall stat-wise, has been his efficiency. He's averaging a career low 3.5 yards per carry in 2018, and averaged 2.4 yards per carry between weeks 2 and 4. I'll repeat that. He averaged 2.4 yards per carry in weeks 2 through 4, which is generally considered ass-rippingly terrible. I mean, just really bad. Easily the worst three-game stretch of his young career. And you know what's worse? He's doing this while facing stacked boxes a mere 15% of the time. Dude faced 8-man boxes on 43% of his plays last season and still managed 4.1 yards per carry. I'll pause a bit while that sinks in for you because, honestly, I need a drink after looking at those numbers. Was I? Right. The stats, as depressing as they are, do point to a reason for Howard's drop in efficiency. A lack of big runs. In 2017, he had three runs of 50 yards or more. This season, he's yet to have a single run of 20 yards or more. That may not sound like a huge deal, until you realize that without those three 50-yard runs last season, Howard's average drops from 4.1 down to, you guessed it, 3.5 yards per carry. The exact same average he's carrying in 2018. So we've narrowed down the reason for Howard's disappearance, but what's the cause? Well, first is usage. As I mentioned before, his touch numbers are down somewhat compared to the previous two seasons. Less touches, even if it's just a few per game, means less chances to break a big one. That one we can tell from the stats. To figure out the rest, we're going to have to look at some tape. This play from week one is a good example of how the running game operates under Matt Nagy. The Bears are in a variation of the shotgun wing T, with Burton lined up as the H-back and Howard motioning from the left to the right side. This is actually a designed run, rather than Nagy's signature run-pass option, where the QB has the option to hand the ball off or pull it back and throw based on the defensive look both pre- and post-snap. How do we know that it's a designed run rather than an RPO? Well, the first clue is that none of the receivers actually run routes. Miller straight up blocks his man from the jump, and the two outside receivers just kind of trot downfield to occupy the defenders. It's a design run, maybe with the read option. But to mask the fact, Burton doesn't stay into run block, but instead releases out into the curl zone to give the impression that there's a pass option on. 
Looking at the line, they're running the standard inside zone blocking scheme, and everyone pretty much does their job. Leno takes the outside linebacker, and Kush takes the defensive end, both pushing them to the outside. Long works inside on the other defensive end and locks him up to create a lane up the middle. Massey and Whitehair are uncovered, meaning they don't have a defensive lineman directly in front of them. So Massey moves on to the second level to take on a safety, while Whitehair moves over to double team the defensive end to help out Kush versus a better player. Notice how Whitehair keeps his eyes on the linebacker here. That'll come into play later. Howard takes the handoff and initially works up the middle. He then breaks to his left and shoots up the gap. See, this is what Howard does so well. He sees the defensive alignment and he knows that if he just hits that hole straight away, Whitehair's gonna have a hard time keeping that mic backer from collapsing the lane. By initially heading up the middle, Howard forces that linebacker to step inside to cover a potential run to the right side gap. This sets up Whitehair to peel off his double team and seal off the linebacker to the inside. This is why he kept his eyes on the linebacker through the whole play, and Howard set him up beautifully. As a result, a nice running lane opens up and Howard's able to turn it upfield. It was a well-designed, well-executed play. Yeah, right up to the point where Eric Cush decided to fall flat on his face anyway. This allowed the defensive end Daniels to collapse the running lane and prevent a bigger play. Literally all Cush had to do was not fall down for half a second, and this easily goes for 15 yards. Even still, the play winds up going for a respectable 6 yards. This illustrates how creativity and misdirection that fans were expecting from Nagy can combine with a savvy running back to set up a play for a big game. Unfortunately, it also illustrates at least one reason why these plays haven't been hitting pay dirt this year. Breakdowns in the run blocking. Now, that's nothing new with the Bears' line. There were plenty of breakdowns last year, too. The Bears' line is solid on the whole, but none of the pieces are really what I would consider truly elite, and a couple are probably just average, if we're being honest. Uh, they're going to get beat at times, and this can kill an otherwise well-designed play. Of course, there's also instances where Nagy gets a little too creative and winds up setting his line up for failure. Case in point, another play from the same game. Nagy pulls out an off-the-wall offensive formation featuring Leno flanking out wide and four down linemen with two tight ends lined up tight in place of the left tackle. The play features fundamentally the same inside zone blocking scheme as before, the difference is being in the defensive alignment and Burton pulling the lead block up the A-gap. At first, everything looks weird, but fine, but then a difference from the previous play becomes apparent. Kush is left one-on-one -on -one with the defensive end Daniels and no one there to help him out. This is a mismatch. So, predictably, as Burton slips through the gap on his way to the second level, Daniels quickly sheds Kush, collapsing the running lane again. This forces Howard to try and cut it back, but it's just too late. He's brought down almost immediately. The formation and play design is certainly creative, but this is an example of how creativity can just bite you in the ass sometimes. The play design leaves Eric Kush one-on-one -on -one with one of the better 3-4 defensive ends in the NFL, and it's just too much for him to handle for an entire play. Hell, it was too much for him to handle for the half second he was asked to be one-on-one -on -one versus Daniels on the previous play. This is a failure of offensive line execution for sure, but it's also a failure of play design to not recognize what a negative matchup it created. Left on an island with Daniels, Kush is outmatched, outgunned, and ultimately outhoused. So, creative play design can both help and hurt the run game. That said, neither of these plays were likely to go for 50 plus yards, even if they were properly executed. So while the play calling at times can hamper the run game, there must be something else at play here preventing those long runs, but what? Well, let's take a look at the 350 yard runs from 2017. First up is a 53 yard jaunt against the Ravens in week six. As you can see, the line doesn't exactly execute their assignments flawlessly, but they do just enough to keep the defense from having a clean shot at Howard. Because of this, he's able to shed a tackle from the safety and break off a big run. Next, we have a 50-yard run against the Saints in Week 8. Again, the blocking isn't perfect, but they do just enough to keep defenders off Howard, allowing him to break into the open field for another big game. Finally, we have another 50-yard run against the Lions in Week 11. As with the others, this isn't blocked perfectly either, but Howard doesn't go down with arm tackles, so it's enough to spring him for another long run. So the blocking was okay, but nothing to get excited about. But those three plays had something else in common. Did you spot it? Yeah, they all happened against defensive formations that featured 10 defenders within 5 yards of the line of scrimmage and a single deep safety. This can happen when teams are in press coverage as the Lions were, but it mostly happens when teams stack the box as the Ravens and Saints did. 
What that means is that once Howard clears the first level, he's only got one guy to beat deep. As strange as it might sound, it seems Jordan Howard actually benefits from facing stacked boxes. Look, I know that sounds crazy, but here's the thing. Howard isn't a burner. He's also not a guy who's going to break your ankles with his agility. He's a one-cut power back. Sure, he doesn't go down easy, but he's not going to outrun anyone and he's not going to make a guy miss. His vision and understanding of the zone running game seems to negate 8-man boxes from play to play. Stacked or not, behind this line he's going to get you 3.5 yards on average play in and play out. And every so often he's going to create enough room to get behind that first level. When the box is stacked and there's one man to beat deep, he's going to go for big yardage. But when it's not stacked, there's guys at the second level waiting and he can't outrun them and he can't make them miss. And that, I believe, is the main culprit. Yes, the hit and miss run blocking plays a part. His lower usage does as well and Nagy's play design can be a double-edged sword. But only facing stack boxes 15% of the time has killed Jordan Howard's ability to break off big runs. And behind this line, he needs those big runs to keep his average up. So Jordan Howard hasn't gone anywhere. He's the same player he's always been, both physically and mentally. Unfortunately, it seems the guilty party here is the exact thing Bears fans pined for under John Fox, the threat of a downfield passing game. And I'm not sure it gets fixed. Maybe with better play calling and line execution, Howard's effectiveness on a play-by-play -play basis can improve. But the truly big plays may be gone for good, save an epic defensive breakdown. This may not be the answer we wanted, but it's probably the one we're going to have to live with. So, case closed. See, the problem with my brother and me is we're recidivists, habitual criminal offenders. No attorney wants to go near us. I got to find him a lawyer. I don't know what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this one took me longer than I originally expected. A lot of things played into that. I got busy with other things, and the timing of my new computer build wasn't the greatest. But the biggest factor was probably that I scrapped a good chunk of this thing when my film study took me in a direction I didn't expect. Uh, I'd even cut together a montage of Howard plays from the Saints game last year compared to the Cards game this year, but all that went out the window. I am going to upload that as its own video though, think of it as like a deleted scene, so you know, check it out if you want to, or you know, don't, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to aim for a bi-weekly schedule with these videos, I think that's something I can probably stick to. If I can squeeze one in more often, uh, I will. So anyway, thanks for checking this out and uh, stay tuned for more. Take it easy guys. Have a scene,